I wanted to do a video on migrant interdiction because it was such a huge part of what I did in the Coast Guard. Just about all my cutters, especially on the East Coast, uh, the Seneca, the uh, Tampa, the Dependable, we spent a majority of our time in the Caribbean doing uh, migrant interdiction. Even when we were doing drug interdiction, uh, you inevitably ran into to migrants. And it's, you know, it's a sad, it's a sad situation <clears throat> because especially the Haitians, because it, predominantly it's Haitians, Cubans, and those from the Dominican Republic. And the Haitians are in really bad shape. And, you know, usually when we roll up on them, they'd be out, already be out for four or five days, and they're in very, very, I mean, serious conditions. Uh, uh, some of them would have been passed away. They, they, uh, they were already out for four or five days with no food and water because they're thinking the trip's only going to take you know, several hours at the most the, the rest of the day, and then they end up being out there for four or five hours. So, you know, a lot of times when we rolled up on them, we were actually their saviors because they would have died uh, with their starvation or, or drowning. And, uh, and then that was also a complicated part of, uh, of the evolution. It was when we'd come upon them, a lot of times they would want to rush to one side. And you'll see in these pictures, they are, these boats are, are grossly overloaded. And you always had the potential of the boat flipping and then the, the migrants getting into the water. And then, you know, most of them can't swim and uh, they were drowned. So, and that did happen, uh, unfortunately. So, you know, you had to be careful when you, when you came upon them uh, because they're so excited because they, you know, in the situations where they've been on there for four or five days, six days, seven days, no food, no water, they want off. <laughs> and uh, who can blame them? But I'll... Uh, kind of run through it. I actually have a couple of different, uh, you know, uh, picture series on Haitians and Dominicans, and I'll kind of roll this first one with the Haitians. And uh, so, you know, uh, th this is us uh, coming upon them and, and, and uh, their boat and picking them up. then bringing them back aboard the cutter. And then uh, women and children come on first. Uh, they're given uh, their search to make sure they don't have any weapons, uh, given toiletries and then we take them up to the, the flight deck and give them a blanket and some sandals so their feet don't get tore up on their non-skid flight deck and uh, you know get them settled in and there's a you'll see there's a little uh, a yellow square box in the back of the flight deck and that's the to their toilet And usually we only had them on board for a day or two, and then would uh, we called it repatriating them back to their their country. We'd take them back into either Haiti, take them back into Haiti, and uh, if we fed them, it was usually you know, something very bland like beans and rice that wouldn't you know uh, upset their stomach. This next series I'll roll is uh, Dominican Repu people from the Dominican Republic, and uh, this is us rolling up on them.
and then bringing them onto the flight deck. And then us taking them in back into the Dominican Republic. Then sort of the aftermath of the flight deck after they're leaving. And I would say all my years of, you know, I was, I was down there from 1987 to, you know, 2005. And I, very rarely did you have an incident where the, the migrants were, uh, were violent. But I do have this picture series of these guys, these people from the Dominican Republic. They, were, they did not want nothing to do with us. And, uh, you know, uh, there's this picture right now, I'll post, of us chasing them into the sunset. And they were throwing everything they had on those two little small boats at us. Their shoes, food, I mean, anything they could get there chucking at us, trying to uh, get us to leave them alone. Finally, we got some entangling uh, device, devices into their propellers and stopped them. And they were still, I mean, uh, didn't want waving machetes around. So luckily there was a, a Dominican Republic Navy boat nearby and uh, it came over and and uh, took charge of them because I don't think we really wanted to have anything to do with them after that. And you may be asking yourself, well, would they, what did we do with the, uh, the boat, you know, once we brought the, uh, uh, the migrants on board? Well, we would just, uh, uh, we would sink them. We would either fire on them uh, with, the, uh, with our, our guns uh, our mounted gun, or we would uh, just set them ablaze. And I'll post a picture here of uh, one of the migrant vessels that uh, we, uh, we set ablaze. Migrant addiction, it's not, uh, not a glamorous part of uh, being in the Coast Guard but it is a very important part of being in the Coast Guard. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, I, I would say overall, it's, it's very sad, especially when you bring the, the migrants on board. Uh, you know, you're getting a little personal with them by when you bring them on board and, and you know, talking with them, giving them their blankets, giving them their food, getting them situated. Uh, and you just see how, how uh, you know, uh, the, con the overall condition of them and you know it gives you a good idea of where they what they came from so but hope you enjoyed that video and if you know if you i i did write a book about my time on the coast guard cutter dependable 2003 to 2005 and i i, I do detail you know uh the the, the migrant uh, stories i've just told you and others and some drug interdiction stories in here and uh so if you uh would like to read it it's uh you can get it through my website, www.edsemler.com, and you can get it as a paperback or an ebook.